Today we'll talk about a mystery that often puzzles visitors and locals alike when in Sydney, Australia. If you've ever been to Wynyard train station in the centre of the city, you might have noticed something odd. There are platforms three and four where you can catch the T1 line that will take you up the North Shore line to Hornsby in the Central Coast or west to Strathfield, Parramatta, Richmond, Penrith and Emu Plains. And there's also platforms five and six, where you can hop on the City Circle Line, which would take you to the famous Circular Quay, the T2 Inner West and Leppington Line, the T3 Liverpool via Bankstown Line, the T8 Line that goes to the airport and MacArthur. But where are platforms one and two? And why are they missing? And what does that have to do with trams? Hi, I'm Marty, and welcome to Backtracks. That's right, trams. Sydney used to have one of the world's largest and greatest tram systems. And by 1961, the trams were replaced by buses and the tracks were ripped up or paved over. And 70 years later, there's not much evidence remaining relative to what once existed. But of course, some traces of the network still remain, hidden in plain sight or buried deep underground. And one of them is at Wynyard Station. So that's the subject of this video. Winyard Railway and Tram Station. To understand how all of this came about, we need to go back in time to before 1932, when Sydney was divided by its harbour. On the northern side of the harbour, the North Sydney tram lines were a separate tram network that basically connected the suburbs of the Lower North Shore with ferry wharves. And these ferries were the main way to cross the harbour to reach the city centre on the southern side. There were several ferry terminals on both sides of the harbour, but the most important ones were at McMahon's Point and Milson's Point on the north side and Circular Quay on the south. In September 1909, a line was opened from McMahon's Point that went up to Victoria Cross in North Sydney and then headed north and west to Lane Cove and Chatswood. While trams heading to the north and the northeast started at Milson's Point Wharf, the original location of the ferry wharf and the tram line is pretty hard to recognise now as the Harbour Bridge's northern pylon is basically built over the same spot where the ferry and tram terminal once was. When the Sydney Harbour Bridge was opened in 1932, the North Sydney lines were reorientated to cross the bridge and then terminate on the southern side of the harbour at Wynyard. The Milsons Point and McMahon's Point tram lines were later closed. Wynyard was a railway station built for passengers and it was opened on 28th of February 1932, coinciding with the opening of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Trams left the Harbour Bridge and went into underground tunnels, arriving at platforms 1 and 2 of Wynyard Train Station. The existing platforms, 3 and 4, basically mirrored exactly platforms 1 and 2. Both had island platforms, with stairs leading to the concourse below. Platforms 1 and 2 were originally designed to handle trains, so when it was decided to use them for trams, the tracks had to be raised up to platform level. And you can see in the picture here, the fantastic indicator board that showed the destinations for each of the trams. In some respects, it's quite an extravagant or elaborate thing to have a tram station built underground in a major city. So let's talk about how that came about. And it all starts with a man, John Bradfield, or JJ Bradfield. He looks a pretty cool character. Now, John Bradfield was an Australian engineer who played a key role in designing and building the Sydney Harbour Bridge. But he did more than that. He is widely recognised as the father of modern Sydney for his contributions to the development of the city's infrastructure and public transport. This is a map from 1925 which shows his proposal for the centre part of Sydney. He proposed building a new underground railway loop in the city of which Wynyard was a key part. The plan included a city circle loop which had Town Hall, Wynyard, Circular Quay St James and Museum. He also proposed the Eastern Suburbs Railway that came in with a Liverpool Street station, went through St James, where some of the tunnel stubs were actually built to service that line, which was never completed, onto O'Connell Street, Pitt Street and then headed out west via Railway Square. And with the opening of the Harbour Bridge, he could then also include railways that went to the northern side of the harbour, with the creation of the North Shore Line, which would go to stations at the time called Kirribilli, North Sydney and Bay Road. 
but then also a line to the northern beaches, which would come up through the east side of the city, across the Harbour Bridge on the eastern side, through Kirribilli, North Sydney, and then to head out to Mossman, Balgala and Manly. And that line was obviously never, ever built. The platforms and tunnels for the Northern Beaches line were actually complete. Now, in this top-down view of Wynyard train station, the orange lines indicate the down and up lines for the T1 railway line as it operates today. And the red lines on the right of screen were designed to be those for the Northern Beaches line. But as we know, during the construction of the Harbour Bridge and the Wynyard station, the North Shore line was built, but the Northern Beaches line was then postponed. And instead, when the bridge was opened, it was decided to use the lines and the station for trams. Interestingly, trams were not originally envisaged to ever cross the bridge. Now here's another view of the station. You can see here in this cross section that platforms one, two, three, and four were on the upper level. And the orange lines here again represent the tram lines as they were actually built. There were double crossovers in the tunnel before reaching the station, and then a single crossover on the down line after the station on the southern side. And the lower level two platforms have been used since opening for the city circle line. Before we go and look inside the old tunnels and station, let's have a look at the concourse. The general layout really hasn't changed since 1932. But what has changed is the steps that went up to platforms one and two have been removed and there's no traces left. But during the development of the station between 2015 and 2018, construction workers uncovered an original set of stairs that went up to platforms one and two, and they'd been bricked up since the 1960s. Unfortunately, these stairs have been since removed to make more space for the concourse area. Now, one thing that certainly has changed about the concourse are the ticket gates. Here are images of the railway station ticket gates and the tram station. Certainly a far cry from today's automated ticket gates using the Opal card. So what became of the tram station when it closed in 1958? Well, in 1964, the station and some of its tunnels were converted to a car park for the Menzies Hotel and the Wynyard Lane Public Car Park. The Wynyard Lane Car Park was closed following the redevelopment of the Carrington Street Precinct. I think it closed in about 2018. And since the car park was closed, the public can't get access to the former station and tunnels. Backtracks purchased tickets to Dark Spectrum, which is part of the Vivid Festival currently running in Sydney, which was a light display inside the former station and tunnels. So we got to go behind these normally locked doors. And during the show, we got to see most of the former infrastructure. And each major section of the former lines and the station had a different lighting and music theme. Here we are looking north back into the station area, which was converted into a two-level parking area. You can see the bottom floor in the red was one theme, and then there was a dark and green light show on the top floor. Well, it's pretty hard to imagine that this was once a tram station, and where we're looking now is exactly where the tram tracks and station used to be. This image here from the 1940s shows the southern end of the station looking south where before we saw there were two stub tunnels. The one on the left, or the eastern tunnel, could hold two trams, and the one on the right could hold five. Now this is the left tunnel when it was a car park, looking towards the end. And this is what it looked like on the night of Vivid. It was a pretty amazing light show, giving the illusion that you were traveling through the tunnel on a moving train. And what you didn't realize until you got to the end, that there was a huge mirror that created the effect that the tunnel was heading further south than you thought. And here we are at the very end of the line. This is as far south as the tunnels were ever mined. What could have been? We then did a 180 degree turn into the Western Tunnel and then again headed north. This is the tunnel that could hold five trams. This area had a completely different theme with different lighting and effects and music. This section was called Unseen and it was really cool. The lighting effect gave the impression that the tunnel was covered in graffiti. Exiting that tunnel, we were back at the tram station. From here, we went to the upper level of the former car park that was built within the station. Now, it was a bit hard to film because it was very dark, lit only by green lasers. Again, it was pretty great to be in there and the film doesn't really capture what it was like to be there. And it was a bit hard to get your bearings in the dark, but I believe we were standing at about the same spot as the tram is in this picture. 
From there, we left the station and walked north along the down or northern running tunnel. This tunnel led up to the deck of the Harbour Bridge and the first section of the tunnel was filled with huge dancing robots. Now you can really get a feel for how large the tunnels were at this point, obviously built for full-sized heavy rail trains. In the earlier diagram in this video, we saw that just to the north of the station was a double crossover track. So here the tunnels opened up into large underground caverns. And when the car park was built, like the station, they built a second story within the space. During the vivid experience, we were only able to walk along the ground floor. The tram tracks literally ran along the floor that crowd is walking on in these scenes. I turned the camera around to look back into the south running tunnel towards what would have been the Winyard tram station. We are now approaching the end of the experience and tour. And after the crossover cavern, we then switched to the up or south running tunnel. And here we are still walking north. And this is how cars would have exited the former car park onto Gloucester Street when the car park was in operation. And while we left the tunnel here, the two tunnels continued to head north until they exited just near the Argyle Cut where there was a tram stop. And today, that tram stop and track is covered over by the two lanes of the Carl Expressway. But the portals are still clearly visible from the walkway. And so, with the death knell sounded at last for the old slow vehicular punt, crossing from the spot where the Opera House now stands to Milsons Point, Sydney's traffic came to life. Well, that about wraps up another episode of Backtracks. A story of a never-built Northern Beaches train line that became a tram line and station that then became a car park, which then closed and for a little while, at least in 2023, became an installation piece at Vivid. And who knows what's next? Thanks always for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the channel. And thanks also, as always, to the information sources. And hopefully it won't be too long until we see you again when we take another look at lost public transport.